Hi everybody, this is Dr. Jeffrey Hanna at Clear Chiropractic and I've gotten one of the most common questions that people ask us and that is what exercises are going to help me to improve the strength and the stability of my neck? Now there's really there's a, a couple of things that you should probably know about first. Uh, number one is that the muscles that actually provide stability for your neck they're unfortunately not the big ones that you can see on the outside. So like your trap or these muscles in the front called your scaling or your SCM. In fact, a good chunk of the time, these muscles simply put are too tight. Why? Because they're having to compensate for the ones below. So similarly, it's like if you're having to work on core exercises for your abdomen, for your glutes, for whatever it would be down in your body, is these are not necessarily exercises per se, that involve a lot of gross movement. And in fact, really some of the, the best ways of strengthening and stabilizing your neck is simply put, it's not doing the things that are most likely going to agitate and irritate it in the first place. So I know that there are a lot of different devices out there where you do, you work on the strength of your neck. This is a good, this is important. However, these are not necessarily the same ones that are going to be providing stability for underlying misalignments deeper down. A good chunk of it then, it has to do with your head position, your head posture. And part of this is laziness and part of it is your fault. So for example, first and foremost, if you are looking forward like this all day, or slumping, or looking down at crisscross angles, or looking up at crisscross angles, those are the kinds of movements that are going to put a lot of stress and strain on all of the joints in your neck. Not going to be a good thing. Now, of course, life doesn't happen in a bubble, and I know that. But what you need to do then, if you are involved in these kinds of movements, all the more reason why you need to make sure that you're doing the right kind of stretches, the right kind of exercises. So where I'm actually going to start, I'm going to start out with the ones that you don't want to do. The ones you don't want to do are these ones. Stretching the neck at a side to side angle or doing this one like this. I see people doing that particular stretch and exercise all the time. They are telegraphing that they actually have something wrong in their neck. Now, whether or not they're getting the right kind of treatment is a whole other thing. But what they don't know is even though that particular kind of movement can provide temporary stretching through your muscles, what it also does is it causes the joints within your neck to jam to get locked up and ultimately move in the way that they're not necessarily wanting to move, especially if something's not moving right on the inside. So what happens, you do that little stretch, and what happens is, is yes, it does temporarily lengthen that muscle, but guess what? It tightens back reflexively, just as hard as it was before. So a few minutes later, it's like you hadn't done anything really at all. Now, in addition to that, I see people do this particular kind of movement as well. And this used to be very, very common going back a, a few decades ago. And it's not a bad exercise. In fact, it is, you know, oftentimes the exact movement that your head and your neck wants to be able to do. However, if you are nursing an injury, if you are going through an active rehabilitation process, this is what I would refer to as a level five exercise. If you are at level one or maybe level zero, this is too advanced. For you and it's apt to cause as many challenges and problems as it would actually be to help so rolling the dice a little bit more than I would like and recommend so the question then is okay well what do I actually recommend first and foremost is simply put what I call a posture chicken or a posture check-in and what that involves is simply put tucking your chin in back like this and sitting up nice and tall so that your ears would be over the tips of your shoulders and your shoulders over the tips of your hips. Why? That is the neutral center of gravity for where your head, your shoulders and your body are supposed to sit. It is the least stressed position possible. Your head, which normally weighs somewhere around four to five kilos or 10 pounds, doubles so add another five kilos or 10 pounds for every inch that your head goes forward. So by tucking your chin in and pulling it back like this, what that does is that puts things into the position of least stress, 
where they will be most efficient to then do these other activities that we're going to do. Now, some people out there might be saying, you know, Doc, I can't actually get my head to come all of the way back. There's too much arthritis or there's too much wear and tear. Or I've got too much pain and discomfort. Okay, well, if that is the case, then what you can do is you can stand up with your back against a wall. Your feet don't need to be against the wall, but what you do is when you pull your head back, you simply put bring your head back as far as you can. Now, I've had some people where they can't get their head to hit the back wall. In fact, there's a gap like this. I am not kidding. But even for these people, over three to six months, and it takes continuous daily work at this. They work to hold that kind of a position for 60 to 60 seconds to two minutes a day. And over a period of time, that muscle actually does lengthen. It does stretch out and they get their head to properly contact the back. Now, the one caveat here is you don't need to cheat. Do not cheat when you do this. What is cheating? Cheating is where you would be instead of bringing your head straight back like this, you're tipping it back and leaning up, looking at the ceiling. That will not accomplish what you're needing to do. You need to activate these deep muscles on the inside, and that's done by just essentially giving you a double chin. That's why we call them the posture check-in. Just like this, hold it for 60 seconds, so one to two minutes. That's number one. Number two, then, are what we're going to be calling bobble heads. And this is in particular useful if and when you have had a jar, a knock, a bump, and you want to actually try to safeguard, protect your neck as much as you possibly can. So what you do, do your posture check-in, come into the right position. And then what you do is you nod up and down only one to two centimeters up and down, kind of like your little bobblehead just like this. You're not doing major amounts of movement and you don't want to do it with your head being sticking too far or leaning up and back like this. Bring it back here first and then glide it up and down. Now when you do this, it's important to visualize that you're doing it from your nose and your chin. You're leading from here. You don't want to be leading from here, that kind of movement, because that's going to jam and jar your joints again. But when you're leading from your nose and from your chin here, trying to keep your neck as still as you can. What you're actually doing is you're getting safe and gentle movement through those joints in a way that's not going to lock and jam them up the way that we were talking about before, like if you're doing this side to side kind of stretch. If you're going up and down, doing these little baba head movements, that is going to be far more effective in terms of protecting your neck alignment and also allowing for the right kind of motion, which is ultimately going to allow those muscles to then work the way that they are supposed to. Now, the third kind of activity, and this one is a lot more customized for the individual. I don't know you personally out there, but I do know that there are certain kinds of movements that if you do them too much, they are going to stress and strain, and they're going to make things feel an awful lot worse. Now, this depends very much on what a person actually has going on in their neck. And it's going to be like poking a bruise if you do too much of the repetitive wrong thing. And so in this particular regard, it's not so much a matter of doing the right kind of exercise, but it is not doing the certain kind of movement that is most likely going to agitate and irritate what you personally have going on. And this is most commonly going to be looking down at crisscross angles or putting the weight of your head looking one way like this or looking one way the other way. Now, as I said, I can't tell you exactly what that is for you right yet. That takes a more personalized in-depth look, but that is also one of the most important things that you can actually do for you to make sure that you are strengthening your neck and making sure that you're not doing the things that are just going to cause it to keep wanting to be, you know, relapsing or producing further aggravation. Now, for people, if and when, you know, you already do have a certain amount of whether it's degenerative arthritis or maybe even osteoporosis, you can't necessarily wind the clock back, your chronological age or the chronological length of time that that issue has been there. However, you can still work on what's known as the biological 
age of the uh, injury. So in fact, even if a person does have arthritis and does have osteoporosis, that does not necessarily guarantee that you're going to have more pain. It means that things are probably not going to move quite as well as they used to. But if you do the best that you can to get movement, even if it's causing you a little bit of discomfort, and exercising the muscle, using your neck the way that it is designed to be worked, what that does is that allows the muscle to stay as strong as it possibly can. And that protects you against further injury. It doesn't guarantee that nothing can go wrong. There's nothing like that that exists in life. But what it does do is it stacks the deck in your favor so that your probability of pain, injury, aggravation is able to start to go down. So good luck with these particular little exercises here again. It's making sure you're staying upright, posture checking as much as you can, and then working the bobbleheads like this, up and down, not side to side. Good luck with these. This is Dr. Jeffrey Hanna at Clear Chiropractic. Get well, live well, stay well. Bye now.